is KPIX CBS News Bay Area. And good evening to you. I am Juliette Goodrich and we are live in Las Vegas. We are counting down to Super Bowl 58. It is a game that you'll only see right here on CBS. You know, we've been in Vegas since Sunday and today the energy is really starting to pick up. We can feel it. 49er fans are starting to trickle in and they're taking over the strip. We caught up with a few of them. None of them have tickets to the Super Bowl. They just want to be in the same city when their team wins. You know, just being around Niner fans and the vibe, it's like, it's like nothing. And um, I'm gonna get as close as I can get. They gonna let y'all know why we call them faithful. That front four gonna show up. Chase gonna play, Bo's gonna play. Hey, and they, you know what? They don't quit hating no Purdy out of this game. Purdy gonna show them. I'm humble, I got this. That's right. We have a whole team in Las Vegas getting ready for Super Bowl 58, including our own Vern Glenn, who joins us from Mandalay Bay, who's got a report on the 49ers. Hi, Vern. All right there, Jules. Good evening from the NFL Experience. We're after three days here in Las Vegas. The 49ers finally took to the practice field as they prepare for the Chiefs. The Niners practice at the much maligned field at UNLV. The team has been unhappy with the turf that they believe was too soft compared to the field that they are used to at Santa Clara. But head coach Kyle Shanahan says the team will continue to practice there for the rest of the week. So, so back here at the fan experience, uh, you talked about how 49er fans are entering the Las Vegas everywhere. There's a lot of them here. It is teeming with 49er faithful. Vern, thank you. Feeling like home. All right, here in Las Vegas, we are finally getting a dry day, thankfully. But that's not the case for the Bay Area. It was another day of scattered showers that will continue through tomorrow. It was coming down hard in San Francisco this morning, in fact. And this was the scene in El Cerrito. You can see some hail kind of bouncing off the edge of this porch. And in the South Bay, the Lick Observatory atop Mount Hamilton even got a dusting of snow. For more now, let's bring in Chief Neurologist Paul Hagen, who is standing by in our virtual set. Hi, Paul. Hey, Jules, yeah, the snow levels dropped down to about 3,000, even 2,800 feet for a little while today, but most of us did see rain across the Bay Area, and it was kind of evenly distributed. Most of us around a half an inch of rain, or maybe a little bit more than that, just over two-thirds of an inch of rain in the Santa Cruz Mountains around Ben Lomond. Enough rain to be problematic if you were on the roads earlier today. Fortunately, not enough rain to cause any significant flooding threat, and even though it's breezy this evening, not enough wind to result in any significant additional damage. The showers continue to move southwest, northwest to southeast across the Bay Area, but they're gradually going to quiet down as we head through tonight. But a few more are going to pop up as we head through the day tomorrow, especially in the afternoon. But even our peak rain chances on Thursday are going to be lower than 50-50 in any particular location. We're going to track those with a longer look ahead at future casts coming up in just a few minutes. But there are still a lot of people across the Bay Area who are still experiencing the aftermath of Sunday's storm system. In fact, tens of thousands of PG&E customers are still without power this evening. You're looking at the current outage map. It's four days after that atmospheric river knocked out power for 1.4 million people across California. There is still no word exactly when power is going to be completely restored. Lorraine Ayub gives us a look at how people are coping. As power outages continue to affect California, residents in the North Bay are doing what they can to be resourceful. That includes seeking refuge at local cafes. This week's damaging storm saw the highest number of outages in a single day, becoming the largest in PG&E history. It's the fourth day without power for some living in the Bay Area. We saw winds in excess of 90 and in one case 100 miles an hour sustained over the course of Sunday into Monday morning. The heavy rain and wind is calm for now, but the aftermath of the storm continues to impact residents. 81-year-old Mike Van Horn of San Rafael is one of them. His neighborhood is still without power, so he decided to seek refuge at his local Starbucks to get by for now. I'm charging up everything, watch, phone, laptop, iPad. 
Uprooted trees and excessive debris are the main cause of the outages and have led folks like Mike to find resourceful ways to stay connected. Mike, who's a full-time author, felt a sense of urgency to complete a project near and dear to his heart. My wife was also a writer and she passed away last fall. So he's finishing up what she started. I'm sitting here trying to compose the final couple of chapters. And while he works away, PG&E continues to work away to give people not just internet access, but other critical necessities like heat. Mike says he's grateful local businesses stayed open to keep warm. It was, it was a blessing to have this. Uh, I almost always start off the day with a mug of hot coffee while I'm still in bed. This time, Starbucks will have to do. He's just doing his best <laughs> to stay positive. Oh, keep your sense of humor. <laughs> we are so tired of this. And now to Stockton, where a major bust on a large sideshow is giving law enforcement the upper hand. Attendees are demanding their cars back. Authorities are saying not so fast. Kenny Choi traveled to Stockton, where the sheriff is saying there is a way to tackle the problem in the Bay Area, too. Deputy Sheriff Andreas Lopez drives past dozens of impounded cars sitting inside the San Joaquin Sheriff's headquarters. Authorities are calling it the largest bust ever in their county. Their main goal is to cause chaos in the streets. They want to close the street down. They want to do a shutdown. Lopez and Sheriff Patrick Withrow say gang members are bringing guns, weapons and drugs to these illegal sideshows. They got a tip shortly before the early Saturday morning chaos. We made a lot of arrests, impounded a lot of vehicles and uh, sent a message to let them know when they come back again, no matter when it is, we're going to be waiting for them. They towed away nearly 90 cars, including those of spectators. Police say many of these illegal sideshows lead to fights and shootouts. They're uh, not only just regular people, they are also gang members. And uh, there is a competition to this as well. Residents who live near Country Club Boulevard and Pershing Avenue, the site of the latest show, say it's a growing problem that happens several times a month. They're dangerous and of course they're very disruptive. It's not, they do them in the middle, you know, when people are sleeping and they're loud. They terrorize the neighborhood. You can't be safe. Attendees have been demanding their cars be returned on social media. The sheriff's office says they could be impounded for weeks, if not months, until court dates are set and the district attorney files felony charges. We're going to take these cars as evidence and, and they are evidence of a crime. Uh, when you come to observe one of these sideshows, you become a participant by law and uh, we're going to hold you accountable. If you got money to, to race your cars like this, you got money to pay for it. And um, I'm glad they finally caught somebody, or caught a lot of people. Sideshows continue to create chaos in Bay Area cities like Oakland. Withrow acknowledges law enforcement in large cities have different challenges than less populated cities like Stockton. It's having uh, the manpower that you can reach out and at a moment's notice draw tons of officers to come in and equipment to come in and, and to handle it. I'm glad the police are, are being proactive about it. They also uh, cause issues with people who are having emergencies and they have to get to one place to, to another and they can't because the streets are shut down with these people doing sideshows. For residents, they're hoping more busts like this will silence the noise.